any forms, but in this particular form, this form is very special for the devotees. Because in that form, in that personality, he assures protection for his devotees and freedom from any obstacles that block us on the path back to home, back to Godhead. So I'll go right into the verse because of the time restriction. And uh, of course, this pastime has so many aspects to it, and we can speak about these different aspects, but I'll get right to the essence of the moment, and that is the appearance of Lord Nishringadev, which is in the eighth chapter, seventh canto. And uh, I'll read one verse. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya So this is 7th Canto, 8th chapter, verse number 17. And this is in the midst of a discussion, not much of a discussion, but a pretty much an accusation by Naranikashi Pud towards his son Prahlad for him being a devotee. Being a devotee seems like it's a great sin <laughs> for the demons and others who have that materialistic entanglement. So I'll read the verse. Satyam vitutam nidabritya basitam vyatim chabuta avikeleshu chatmanaham adrishya ya bhuta rupam udyavan stambe sabadyam namigarga namusam. And the translation is. <clears throat> To prove that the statement of his servant, Prahlad Maharaj, was substantial, in other words, to prove that the Supreme Lord is present everywhere, even within the pillar of an assembly hall, the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Hari, exhibited a wonderful form never before seen. The form was neither that of a man nor that of a lion. Thus the Lord appeared in his wonderful form in the assembly hall. Srila Prabhupada's purport. When Hirashi Rani Kashipu asked Prahlad Maharaj, where is your Lord? Is he present in this pillar? Prahlad Maharaj fearlessly replied, yes, my Lord, he is present everywhere. Therefore, to convince Harani Kashipu that the statement of Prahlad Maharaj was unmistakably true, the Lord appeared from the pillar. The Lord appeared as half lion and half man, so that Harani Kashipu could not understand whether a great giant was a lion or a human being. To substantiate Prahlad's statement, the Lord proved that his devotee, as declared in Bhagavad Gita, is never vanquished. Kontiya pratijani hi name bhakta pranashiti. Prahlad Maharaja's demonic father had repeatedly threatened to kill Prahlad. But Prahlad was confident that he could not be killed since he was protected by the Supreme Lord. By appearing from the pillar, the Lord encouraged his devotee, saying, in effect, don't worry, I am present here. By manifesting his form as Narasimhadev, the Lord also preserved the truth of Lord Brahma's promise that Harani Kasibu was not to be killed by any animal or by any man. The Lord appeared in that form that could not be said to be fully man or a lion. Srila <clears throat> Prabhupada Ki Jai. So, some of the main points in this verse, which are very important for us to understand, as the Lord is everywhere. Anantarastam Paramachayantarastam. He is present within his spiritual abode in the spiritual world. He is present within the hearts of all living entities. And the Lord is also present within 
and between every atom of the existence. And the Lord can manifest his form at any time, in any place, anywhere, completely, because he is already everywhere. He's everywhere in his unmanifested form, but if he wants to manifest his transcendental form, he can just do that automatically and he can appear. The Lord, when you call the Lord, he doesn't have to run and get on Garuda and fly a long way to get to where you are so he can help you. He's right there immediately. In fact, he's the closest thing to us. Um, even closer than our own self, the Lord is there within the heart of all living entities, but he's everywhere within existence. Um, Harani Kasipu was an arrogant person his arrogance was so strong that he considered himself to be the, the most invincible living entity in the universe. So much so that he felt no one, everywhere, anywhere, everywhere, can be more powerful than him or cause him any difficulty. This was arrogance. Of course, he got that arrogance because he received some benedictions from Lord Brahma. Thinking that Lord Brahma was the supreme person, he performed great austerities. The austerities that Harani Kashipu performed cannot be performed by anybody anywhere ever again. They were so powerful and so impossible to even believe what to speak of trying to imitate those that he is unique for performing austerities. I mean, he was standing on his tippy toes with his arms straight up in the air, looking high in the air and simply meditating on the power in the universe and trying to bring that power towards him. And he did it. He actually did it. So much so that although the material energy was attacking him in so many ways, a whole gigantic anthill went around his body, and uh, it ate his entire body. There was nothing left of his body. But he was so expert that he knew the yoga system, and he kept his life air floating within his bones and maintained his existence. Because by medical science, you can understand if the life air is still there, life is still there. Just like they say, in India, it's quite common to say, well, the life is gone. They refer to the life air because the life air keeps the soul within the body like that. And as soon as the life air is gone, the soul is also gone like that. So he had that power <clears throat> and he received benedictions thinking that he could be uh, immortal by asking different ways that one can kill, be killed and be prevented from being killed in that way. And so he received the benedictions of not being killed, either land, sea, or air, man, or animal, inside, outside, day or night, by any weapon. So many benedictions. But God is more intelligent than any living being can possibly figure out. And it's interesting because the Lord appeared in a form at the time where he kept all the benedictions of Brahma. And the same time, he thwarted the demon's arrogance by destroying him. It's interesting. But the point here is that here we're going actually to an, a particular scene that's actually happened. Prahlad Maharaj, after being chastised by, by Harani Kastipu so many times and being attempted to be killed, his father sent him back to the school. And his teachers couldn't do anything with him. His teachers tried to inculcate him with demoniac philosophy. <laughs> you know, be a good demon. Learn how to understand who's your enemy and who's your friend and learn how to destroy your enemy and make friends with your friend so you can actually use your friend to help destroy your enemy. And this is Arani Kashipu's uh, teachers, Sunda and Amarka. So when they when actually they realized 
that this boy has too much devotion for the Lord. There's nothing we can do. We've tried everything <laughs> short of trying to kill him. And so they sent him back to his father and said, you know, it's up to you. You have to do something with him because we failed. And Rani Kasipu now is approaching his son. And he says one thing, which is really instructive. Where do you get your power from? I mean, the Rani Kasipu tried to kill him in so many ways. Throwing him off the cliff, throwing him in an ocean, but a mountain on top of him being stabbed by his demon's assistant in a pit of snakes. He gave him poison. What else? He tried so many ways. He threw him in. He had his, uh, his uh, sister, whose name was, what was her name anyway? I can't remember her name. But she had the benediction. She could not be burned by fire. So she held Perlot on her lap, and they started a fire around it. But by the power of Pallad's devotion, the fire burnt her, and he was still unhurt by the fire. This is very instructive for the devotees to understand that this really important, no matter how powerful the demons are, the devotees are more powerful. Why? Because they take shelter of the all-powerful Supreme Lord. And especially on his form as Lord Nasringadev, who is especially, what we say, empowered by his own desire to give protection to the devotees. And there's so many stories, we can relate so many stories, how the devotees, I'm sure even many of you here, know stories or even have been involved how the Sringadev has turned a situation completely around and saved the life of a devotee. So many times. There's hundreds of stories all in the ISKCON society. So the devotees are more powerful than the demons. Even by the collective power of the demons, they can't do anything. Why? Because they're protected by the Lord. And therefore, devotees are fearless, knowing that if they continue to worship the Lord, there's nothing in the material energy that can harm the devotees. The only way the devotees can get harmed is if they harm themselves. <laughs> So we have to be careful on how we execute our devotional service in such a way that we're always under the shelter of the Supreme Lord. And that's the most important thing, how to take shelter. And Prahlad was absorbed in the shelter of the Lord. And so Harani Kashipu was really mortified. How is it? Where? Where do you get your power from? Because... Harani Kashipu had such power that if he simply raised his eyebrows, the demigods would run in fear. Uh-oh, here comes another attack by that guy. We're going to run. The only demigods that weren't fearful of Harani Kashipu were Brahma, Shiva, and Narada. The rest, completely, all the other 33 million demigods were like sheep when it came to Harani Kashipu. He's so powerful. And so he felt he was invincible and there was no power greater than him in the, within creation. But he couldn't do anything to his son. The son was absorbed in thinking and worshiping Krishna. So he said something. He said, where do you get your power from? I want to know. <laughs> and you know what Karani, you know what Prahlad said? Same place you do. <laughs> the same place anybody gets the power. There's only one source of power. That source of power is the power that exists everywhere. And that is Krishna. Oh my God, when he heard the word, when he heard the name of the Lord, he became more <laughs> angry. Well, I was telling the truth. Any, even the demons get their power from Krishna because they worship and the material energy in such a way that they want to be powerful. So if they perform the right austerities and act in the particular way, they become powerful. And power is available by austerity. And so the demons know how to do that. But they have material power. And material power is subordinate to spiritual power. So now, when he said Krishna, 
And then Harani Kashipu got really angry. He pulled out his sword and was about to cut the head off of his son, at least try to anyway. And then he started waving his everywhere. And then at one point he got so angry, he punched this pillar, huge pillar. And he says, is your Lord inside here also? Perfect arrangement. <laughs> and as soon as he did that, it is ex explained that, uh, let's see, let me read the verse here. He heard this sound. The sound was the cracking of the pillar. He looked around and couldn't find the source at first, but then he saw the wonderful form of the Lord which could not be ascertained to be either a man or a lion. It came out of the pillar. The Lord was born in a jail, in the jail cell of Devaki and Vasudev. The Lord is born, where else does he appear? He portals from the nostrils of Lord Brahma. He becomes Varahadev. So now the Lord's mother is a pillar. He comes out of the pillar, right? So now he's appearing, and the, and Rani Kashipu said, what is this creature? Half man, half lion. What is this, some creation, some mystic power? And then it says here, and I'll read it. This is very, very descriptive. Rani Kashipu studied the form of the Lord, trying to decide who the form of the Nimishingade was standing before him. The Lord's former was extremely fearsome because his angry eyes, which resembled molten gold, his shining mane, which expanded the dimensions of his fearful face, his deadly teeth and his razor-sharp tongue, which moved about like a dueling sword. His eyes were erect and motionless. His nostrils and gaping mouth appeared to be caves of a mountain. His jaws parted fearfully and his entire body touched the sky. His neck was very short and thick, his chest broad, his waist thin, and the hairs on his body as white as the rays of the moon. His arms, which resembled flanks of soldiers, spread in all directions. As he killed the demons, rogues, and atheists with his conch shell disc, club, lotus, and other natural weapons. And that's what Harani Kashi Poo said. And then he thought, he thought to himself, Lord Vishnu, who possesses great mystic power, has made this plan to kill me. But what is the use of an attempt? Who can fight with me? So this is the nature of the demons. They think nobody is better than them. Because they have such power, they think they're invincible. And if they just use their power, everyone else becomes, well, what we say, destroyed. Who can fight with me? Thinking like this and taking up his club, Harani Kashipu attacked the Lord like an elephant. So here's an interesting analogy. He attacked the Lord like an elephant, and the Lord was like a lion. So in the jungle, lions and elephants fight. But who wins? Lions. The lions always win. So the analogy is very perfect for this particular scene, that he was acting like an elephant, but he didn't know he was going to fight something that was more powerful than he was. And so, of course, the fight goes on. And then the Lord plays with him like he plays with a little toy, you know. And it's, it goes on to explain, therefore, the great demon Harani Kashipu was extremely angry swiftly attacked Nisringadev with his club and began to beat him. So beating him with a club is like is like somebody taking a flower and hitting you with it, you know, it's like no effect, you know. Please don't hit me so hard with that flower. It hurts. Oh a flower can't hurt you. <laughs> but he was the Lord was simply, you know, okay. Lord Nishringa Dave Howard captured the great demon along with his club, just as Garuda might capture a great snake. 
when Lord Nisringadev gave Harani Kashipu a chance to slip from his hands, just as Garuda sometimes plays with the snakes and lets it slip from his mouth, the demigods, now the demigods are watching all this. It's like a front row seat and they're rooting for the Lord, you know, and they paid, they, they paid a good price to get this seat, you know. So it's exciting. But now the Lord looks like he's losing. You know, if you in a in a fight that's not fair, you gotta let the opponent like give him a chance to got to kind of like make him feel like he's winning a little bit. So the fight goes on. And people pay good money to see a fight, and you don't want to end it so soon. So you have to keep the fight going by letting your opponent kind of get a little more powerful. So this is what happens. So the demigods, when they saw this, their abodes. They had lost their abodes who were hiding behind the clouds. They were fearful of the demons. They became extremely perturbed. When Harani Kashipu was freed from the hands of Nisringadev, he falsely thought that the Lord was afraid of his prowess. Therefore, after taking a little rest from the fight, he took up his sword and again attacked the Lord with great force making a loud, shrill laughter, the Supreme Personality of Godhead, who is extremely strong and powerful, captured Rani Kashipu, who was protecting himself from all sides with his sword and shield, leaving no gaps. Rani Kashipu was a good fighter, and he could fly in the air. He had that mystic power. And sometimes he appeared in the sky, and sometimes he appeared in the earth. But when he heard the, the, the shrill laughter of Lord Nisringadev, he became fearful. What did he do? Closed his eyes <laughs> out of fear. So here, we're getting to the good part. It's getting exciting now. As the Lord captures a mouse, I'm sorry, as a snake captures a mouse, or Garuda captures a very venomous snake, Lord Narasingadev captured Arani Kashipu, who could not be pierced, pierced even by the thunderbolts of King Indra. As Harani Kashipu moved his limbs here and there and all around, very much afflicted after being captured, Lord Nishringa, they placed him on the lap, supporting him with the thighs and the doorway of his devil. <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> he, he performed the perfect operation. The operation was successful, the patient died. <laughs> Perfect operation. And then the Lord wanted to experiment a little bit more, and he picked up the heart of Harani Kasipu, and he looked at it, and he thought, you know, I used to be in this guy's heart, but what happened to the heart? <laughs> it went bad <laughs> through it. <laughs> Just to make a point, you know. But then he wanted, what the Lord wanted to do, he wanted to show some glory to Hirani Kasipu. So now he's pulling out his intestines. It's really an exciting scene. You know, the, if you bring this to a movie with special effects, this would really be a, you know, a big seller. And he took out his intestines and he put it around him like a garland. And it was, a, you know, it was a red garland, obviously. <laughs> Why did he do that? What was the purpose of that? He did it in order to show that this is my devotee. And he became a demon, and he fought with me. And so just to honor his devotee, he accepted a garland, which was his intestines, because he didn't really have a garland to offer. <laughs> but he offered him his intestines. So the Lord wanted to show... You know, he had no enmity towards the demon. Sometimes people criticize the Lord being partial. He favors one, he doesn't favor another, or he does something to one and then he forgets about another or something. But the Lord is impartial. He has no enmity, envy, or hatred towards anyone. But the Lord was angry. Why was he angry? And this is the most important part of the whole story. Because he caused so much disturbance to his, his de devotee, Prahlad Maharaj. 
That's why he was. The Lord was angry because of what he had done to Prahlad Maharaj. But otherwise, the Lord had nothing against Karani Pasi Pu, because Karani Pasi Pu is another living entity. Unfortunately, he's in the wrong consciousness. So the Lord loves each and every living entity perfectly, completely, without any, what we say, differences. But he treats those differently according to how they approach him, how they worship him. But the Lord was angry because of what he had done to Prahlad Maharaj. And so after he killed him, which was really exciting, then it says, yeah, and that verse mentions the, and then there are the demons, the soldiers of Hirani Kashipu attacked the Lord. And then that was a big fight. You can see the picture. The Lord manifested how many hands? About a hundred. And he was just picking the demons up and just bringing them to their ultimate destination, dispatching them to the, the boat of Yamaraj. But the Lord was having a good time. He was enjoying it. He enjoys good fights. In fact, this whole pastime is based on the Lord wanting to fight. Hirani Kashipu was Jai. And there was another one, Vijay, which was Hiraksha. They came to the material world simply to satisfy the Lord in his fighting spirit. It says that the Lord likes to fight. Prabhupada says, where do you get that propensity to fight? Because it's in the Lord. And therefore, we also have that tendency to fight. But when the Lord fights, everyone benefits. When we fight, we don't know who's going to benefit or who's not going to benefit. So this is, uh, this is a very important part of this whole pastime. The Lord has no enmity towards anyone. He is equally loving to each and every living entity. Now, after killing all these demoniac soldiers, you know, and the Lord's, and the Lord's hair on his head shook and the clouds scattered here and there. You can imagine his form when he appeared covered the whole sky. It was huge. It was a gigantic form. It wasn't just like the size of a normal form. It was huge, big. And in fact, they, even the clouds were being scattered by the presence of the Lord's form. And now the Lord, after he kills all the demons, he's angry. He's really angry. And he's just ferocious. Now the demigods, finally they're happy. They showered flowers. The demons killed. They're feeling now we can go back to managing our affairs without this uh, harassment. And so Brahma comes, Shiva comes, Lakshmi comes, all the great demigods come. And the Lord is still growling. He's still angry. And now they're thinking, what are we going to do? How can we approach the Lord now? So Brahma, he goes up to uh, Lakshmi and says, Lakshmi Devi, that's your husband. She says, no, it ain't. <laughs> I never saw anybody like that. She, he said, she said, I never saw my husband in that form before. I'm not going. <laughs> she wasn't going to go. So Brahma tried different demigods. Everybody were, was immediately, even before they asked, they weren't willing to go. But then he said to Prahlad, Prahlad, he came because of you. <laughs> so you should go and pacify him. So Prahlad found a garland and came. And then you can see the beautiful picture. The Lord is sitting there. And then he's still angry. And then Prahlad comes up with the gardens, garland, stands at the lotus feet of the Lord, ready to offer the garland. And as soon as he, he saw that, the Lord looked at Prahlad. He looked this way, it was on this side. And he, he became pacified. He became like a gigantic pussycat. He became so calm and peaceful. And then he picked up Prahlad and set him on his lap. And in a very affectionate way, he actually caressed him on his head with his hand. And Prahlad offered the garland to the Lord. And the Lord was so happy with his devotee. It was a wonderful exchange because this is one of the qualities of the Lord. How much the Lord loves his devotees. Prahlad never compromised the philosophy 
he always preached the truth, knowing that by preaching the truth, he would be harassed and even attempted to be killed. But he never gave up on the truth. It's a really important part that the, there is an old saying in the Christian tradition, the truth shall set you free. Mm -hmm. Just like we're living in this particular situation now in this, what we say, restrictive type of time where there's much disease and much restriction for mobility and nobody knows exactly how things will manifest in the future. But if we live according to religious principles, nothing changes for the devotees except one thing. We become more spiritually advanced. This particular situation in the world is like a little Harani Kashi Poo running around and trying to make difficulty for people. And, and some people are also experiencing difficulty, but for the devotees, no difficulty. Why? Because they know that this material world is a place of suffering. You can't do anything to change it. You can somehow or other uh, take the opportunities that the material energy gives you to become more Krishna conscious. And that's the most important element in any difficult situation. It increases the, the, the devotion of the devotees. So Prahlad Maharaj's bhakti was increased more and more simply because of being killed. He, he absorbed himself so much that he was in trance. He wasn't even aware many times of how they were trying to kill him. It was like there was nothing happening because the Lord is the controller of the material energy and nothing can happen to anyone unless the Lord allows that. So he gave him complete protection and the Lord was just thinking of the Lord within his heart. The Lord, Prahlad was a devotee of Krishna. He was thinking of Krishna, not Harani, not, not Nishringadev. But Nish, the Krishna manifested the form as Nishringadev just because it was suitable for this particular pastime. The Lord protected his devotee in such a way that the demon was killed and, and at the same time Brahma, who gave the benediction, his, his benedictions were kept intact. And now Prahlad is sitting on the lap of Lord Nishringadev and He's offering beautiful prayers to the Lord. The Lord is so happy to be with his devotee that he asks, he says to he says to Prahlad, because of your devotion to me, because of your love for me, I want to offer you some benediction. Please take something, something. The Lord is so what we say, what's the word? He's he's grateful. When we offer devotional service to the Lord, seriously offer devotional service to the Lord, the Lord's grateful for that. He's very grateful. And he always remembers every little service anyone ever does. He, he never forgets anything, but he especially remembers his devotee. So now the Lord wants to reciprocate. And so he says, ask anything. Prahlad Maharaj turns to the Lord and he's embarrassed. He says, you know, I don't worship you for anything. I worship you because I love you. I worship you out of love. So there's nothing I want. But the Lord doesn't give up. Please ask anything, any benediction. Finally, Prahlad realized that the Lord has to hear something from me. So he said, well, my father was a big demon. You killed him. Give him liberation. That's what he was thinking. Although his father was such a thorn in the side of everyone, he tried to kill his own son. I mean, when you think about that, what kind of father would try to kill his own son? something very evil. Still, Prahlad Maharaj was thinking, give him your mercy. Prahlad never held any enmity against his father. He realized his father was, you know, off. <laughs> but he never hated his father. 
And so when he asked that, the Lord said, he's already liberated. <laughs> Simply by me destroying him, he's be, he, he, he attained liberation. And so then Prahlad Maharaj was thinking, what should I ask? The Lord is not going to leave me unless I ask for something. Why, Prahlad Maharaj said, give me the benediction that I can stay in this material world and be an instrument for your mercy to save all these fools and rascals who have made a humbug civilization here. In other words, let me preach to the fallen conditioned souls. Let me be your instrument to save them. When the Lord heard that, the Lord's heart melted in complete love for his devotee. He said, you don't even have to ask. Whatever you ask for me, it automatically is, is granted. So, of course, later on, Prahlad Maharaj became the king of the demons because he was born in a demonic uh, family. And then, of course, he preached Krishna consciousness everywhere. And Srila Prabhupada, towards his last days, when he, when he, just before he departed the world, this was in 1977, when Prabhupada was not able to speak so much, he was spending most of his time talking to devotees more like on a one-to-one -one basis, room conversations, and he gave up his morning walks. He couldn't do the morning walks anymore. But when he gave a class, he would always speak on Prahlad Maharaj. Prabhupada really, really had a lot of attraction and affection for Prahlad Maharaj. In fact, when you hear Prabhupada in one lecture talk about Prahlad Maharaj's devotion, Prabhupada starts crying, just thinking of the devotion of Prahlad Maharaj. And so, yeah, Prahlad Maharaj is very special and that we can learn a lot from him. We can learn that, that as long as we take shelter of the Supreme Lord. And taking shelter is an art. What does it mean to take shelter of the Lord? It means to completely absorb yourself in thinking of the Krishna with devotion. That's what it means. The intensity of our shelter or our devotion brings about the mercy of the Lord. And what happens sometimes Krishna arranges for the devotees to be put into difficult circumstances. Why? Because it increases our devotion. It increases our attachment, and it increases our, uh, let me say, our enthusiasm to take shelter of the Lord. So for devotee, there's nothing inauspicious. The only thing that devotees have to worry about is somehow or other, trying to spread Krishna consciousness to others, that becomes our difficulty. How we can somehow or other bring Krishna consciousness to others. So this is a beautiful pastime. There's much to be said according to this particular pastime, but we have to end, I was supposed to end at 7.45, right? So we can stop here. Okay, so Narda Rish said we can also accept questions. Okay. Also, Machi, you had a question too? Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, my question is next. Uh, we see that there are many names of Nashinga Dev. There is Divya Simha. Maha Simha, Ugra Simha, uh, these particular pastimes is um, referred on, on Prahlad Nasimha uh, story. I just want to know if there is some other pastimes of Nasimha Dev in regard of his names. Like, I don't know, I, Ugra Simha is this when he is angry, but I don't know, there is a, a Divya Prabhanda. There is uh, names of, uh, uh, um, how is it, Durmi, Durmi, Durmi Rikshaya. There is so many names. So I just want to know if there is some other stories from Purana, if you know, uh, of course, mm. which are 
Mm. The Lord appeared in that particular form in order to keep the benedictions of Lord Brahma. But the form of Lord Nisringadeva is an eternal form. Eternal. Yeah. But the Lord manifests his form in different manifestations of his form. The Lord has nine different forms that he appears in as Nisringadeva. From very, uh, what we say, passive, when he had a pull out in his lap, to very Ugra, when he came out of the pillar. So in between those two, there are there are seven other forms of the Lord from more ferocious like that. But we don't know, and I've never heard, unless someone else knows, of another pastime aside from Pallad Maharaj, where the Lord appeared in that particular form. I'm not saying there isn't, I just don't know. You'd have to really do, do some research. <laughs> if anybody's heard any other Where Lashringa Dave appeared again? So I, I can't remember the details, but I know at least two occasions when Lord Nassim appeared to protect his devotees, described in scriptures. But a, I, scriptural, I a scriptural pastime. Yes, hmm. but I can't tell the details, honestly. Mm -hmm. Okay, I can accept that. Mm -hmm. I just don't know the pastimes either. <laughs> Okay, but uh, what is that? He's inside, he's outside, he's everywhere. So Lord Nishringa is everywhere. <laughs> yes, Matsya, would you like to? Yeah, thank you very much. Um, so it's more like an uh, observation. I'm not sure I can articulate a question uh, in particular. Uh, speaking of glories of Pla Prahlad Maharaj, at, at, toward the end of your um, uh, discourse, So toward the end of your uh, discourse, um, you mentioned the, uh, the mood of Prahlad Maharaj. And uh, at that time, I was thinking about the, uh, the boys who were saved by Krishna when they entered the snake, mm. but also uh, Shlahaida Stakur and his mentality when he was beaten on the, uh, at the marketplaces. So he was simply praying for the benefit of, of his torturers. Right. And then at the end, he even left the body in order to save them. Apparently. Is there any, can you connect anyhow, or is there anything you'd like to, and as a comparison, yeah. not exactly as a question, I'm not sure how to, but there is something in, in those two. I think there, there is a difference well, in the mood, but I, I can't. Well, I guess the point you're showing, at least through your explanation, is that there that pure devotee doesn't even hate those who hate them. Mm -hmm. And they're always they're, they're, as Prabhupada says, they're the well-wishers of everyone. They wish everyone well in the sense that they wish even the demons would get the mercy of the Lord and become devotees. <laughs> so that's the mood of a great devotee of the Lord. When Harani Kashipu, I mean not Harani Kashipu, when uh, Perla, um, Haridas Dakor, he didn't leave his body. He just appeared to. He threw it in the river, he floated down, and then he came up on the other side and he went out and started preaching again. <laughs> so, yeah, that's the nature of a, a great soul. They don't feel any, uh, even the slightest bit, uh, envy or en enmity towards anyone. They wish everyone well. Because they see that a person, in his real sense, is a pure spirit soul, but it's covered by this material dust or dirt. And the more the covering, then the more degraded the person becomes. So they're seeing that that, that real that soul is really part of Krishna, and Krishna loves that soul just as much as he loves any other soul. So they wish that soul well, and again, they wish that they would become a devotee of the Lord. Like that. So that's the that's the nature of a great soul. But we can't imitate that. <laughs> but that is the state of pure consciousness. 
because they also know they're not this body. And even if someone someone takes their body, they know they 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 live eternally anyway. They're not attached to their body; they're attached to Krishna. <laughs> and so, even if they lose their body, they know they don't lose Krishna. <laughs> In fact, many times they go on to a higher destination. So that's uh, yeah, that's a nice point. Right. Uh, a lack of enmity or enmity, en envy of any living entity. Even those who become. Prabhupada says that many times. Mm, devoted people will become our enemy, but we are not the enemies of our enemies. That's the exactly way he says it. We are not the enemies of those who will make us their enemy. <laughs> Of course, we avoid them, but at the same time, and we have to defend ourselves also against them, but at the same time, we don't hate them, we just know that they're just sick. <laughs> it's a disease. Anyone else would like to add anything? Tulsi Munjari? She's always... Thank you. Uh, Prahlada Maharaj was definitely a uh, bhakta of, of Krishna, like you said. But uh, uh, Krishna say in Bhagavad Gita, among them, demon, I I am uh, Prahlada Maharaj. This this is uh, I in begin beginning I don't understand this <laughs> statement, but. Uh, now I think yeah, that I understand yeah. this, but there is many uh, many example in Srimad Bhagavatam. The, there is Vitrasura, uh, uh, Vamana, and so and so. Uh, this this example, I think this is we have in same time demonic and the god godless uh, character. Mm -hmm. This is very uh, similar, like uh, in. Kali Yuga, <laughs> this is my um, thinking. What are yeah. you thinking about this? <laughs> you have a choice whether you want to be a devotee or a demon. <laughs> yes, but the, the, this uh, statement does... Uh, Don't become a demon, please. <laughs> yes. That, uh, among de become demon, a devotee. Uh, Prahlada, there's Krishna say, I'm on demon, but hmm. uh, I am Prahlada. But, uh, Prahlada well, because he was born in that family. He was mm -hmm. born in the family of demons. And then when Harani Kashipu was killed, there was no king to lead the demons, so Pallad Maharaj became the king of the demons. But he was a devotee. <laughs> his position and his mentality were completely opposite. Hard to understand. <laughs> But he's not a demon, in no sense of the word. He's just been given that position because he was born in that line. He was born in the Daichi family. <laughs> okay, so we can stop here. Yes, you have a qu another question from online? Yes. Um, we have a question by Shri Devi Dasi. Um, <laughs> please accept my humble obeisances. All cool. glories to Srila Prabhupada and Your Holiness. Glories to Lord Nasimhadev. Is it a good idea to pray for Prahlad Maharaj like consciousness? I pray almost every day for this, but am wondering if it is presumptuous. Hmm. Well, you, you could pray to serve Prahlad Maharaj, but don't try to be like Prahlad Maharaj. If you serve great souls, they give you their mercy, and by their mercy you make advancement in devotional service. But if you try to imitate, 
And then that is called, there's an anushkaran, anusharan. Anushkaran means imitation, anusharan means following in the footsteps. Following in the footsteps means to glorify them, find ways to serve them, learn the, the qualities that they exhibit, and try to practice those qualities in your own life. I don't know, you can't imitate. Imitation is is cheap. <laughs> be yourself, but be Krishna conscious. <laughs> That's the idea. But we can be inspired by great souls and what they exhibit in their devotion. We can start to develop these qualities gradually. Okay. Finished? Yeah. All right. Well, thank you very much for coming. You made our day and the Shrinka Day, his appearance day is so wonderful. Us here who have been hiding out for so many months, <laughs> hiding here. So thank you all for coming. And please have a wonderful rest of the evening. I think there's Kirtan now. Yeah. No, I'm not going to lead. <laughs> I don't want to refuse, but I'm not qualified to lead amongst all these devotees here. So we can uh, choose as someone who would like to lead. I'm not. A, I'm not a good singer. I sing like uh, Harani Kashi Poo, and so. Well, I can I can qualify for that. That's that's definitely no 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 no. no. <laughs> we have ten minutes is it's it's nine minutes and fifty nine seconds too long. <laughs> so. I mean, we have, uh, you know, Seva Kunj, who leads like the voices coming from the spiritual world. So, and of course, who else? I don't know who else would like, but if Seva Kunj is still inclined to lead, so I would offer my position to her right now, <laughs> a position that I never had, but, I'm, but I'll give it to you anyway. Kala? Oh, okay. So, so uh, Deva, Deva, since you're in charge, you choose. He chose his Kala. Okay, so this is the, we're in the proper Kala right now. So, okay. This is... So Kala will lead, how much Kala are we going to have? 10 minutes of Kala? <laughs> okay. So Sri Nishringa Bhagavan Ki. Sri Prahlad Maharaj Ki. Mahab Mahotsav Appearance Dev Sri Bhagavan Nishringa Deva Ki. Hare Krishna. Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai. Yagomila Chandra Maoli Swami Maharaja Ki Jai.